Hello, this is Victor, and this is the first video of a series of three videos where I will explain the three battles on my last tournament. The tournament was the Great Knight 3 Pairs Tournament, and we played with Tau plus Great Knights. I was playing Great Knights, my colleague was playing Tau, and in the first game we played again against Elder and Dark Elder. If you want to know the details of our army, you can click on the box and then you will find the preparation of our army and also there I explain some of the special rules of this tournament. So, and this is driving some of the restrictions of the list that you will see during the, these videos. So, our first game was against Elder plus Dark Elder. So the Elder had Farseer in jet bike, three jet bikes, five Dark Avengers in a Wave Serpent, one Wraith Knight and a unit of two Walkers. And the Dark Elder have the Archon with the Shadow Field and, and then seven Incubi in a Rider, five Warriors in a Venom, one Ravager and one Talos. In this tournament all the scenarios have three levels of objectives. So in that battle the first objective was Emperor Wheels. The second objective was Crusade and we have to play D3 plus 2 um, objective in the terrain of no nobody, so in the in out of the deployment area. The deploy was down of war and then the third objective is the secondary objective in the in the um, rule book, so slain the warlord, first blood, and line breaker. So in that first game, we won the initiative. We decide the side, and so our strategy was to keep the fire warriors, the tau fire warriors, and the broadsides at our backward. And then at the mill field, I deploy all my great knights, try to block the advancement of the. Elder and try to uh, avoid that they can capture the objective in the middle of the battlefield. So around this building in the mid or these ruins in the middle of the battlefield, there are three objectives. So it's quite a key piece uh, element of terrain in that battle. Then they deploy and we use our infiltrate troops. So the crews infiltrate uh, as you see to be able to use the snipe rifles against the Wraith Knight and we also infiltrate in that ruins of what is still suits. So this is another overview of the battlefield. As you can see our roadsides are trying to cover the line of shoots from our left flank. We also place the hammerhead in the other side. As we didn't know how the enemy deployed, we tried to cover as maximum as possible the different line of sights on the battlefield. And then our Tau Fire Warriors are protecting our objective in our deployment zone that are in the ruins where they deploy. As you can see, our enemies try to avoid the shooting from our both sides and they deploy almost, um, I will say, 90% of the of the army behind this big building. So our roadside didn't have a line of sight to all this part of the army. And then the Wraith Knight was the, and the Wraith Knight and the Jet Bikes was the only thing that they deploy in the mid of the deployment zone, so they will try to cover the objective. So this is a picture after our first movement. As you see, I move ahead with all my Grey Knights, and I try to be in the middle of of the battlefield as soon as possible. Our shooting was not very successful in this first turn. I just we just managed to create one or two wounds on the Talos and one wound on, on the Wraith Knight. And I think we killed two jet bikes so we didn't have the first blood on the first turn. But on the other side our enemies shoot on especially on my terminators and on our stealth suits. I think they killed two Terminators, two Steel Suits, so they didn't have first blood neither on the first turn. So one thing that our opponents did is they moved with the Rider with the Incubi and the Archon very fast to our left flank, 
try to neutralize our broadside so in that way they will avoid to have this heavy shooting from our side so the broadsides are a big threat for them because they can kill any of the vehicles quite easily the race knight is moving to our right flank and there just behind the race knight there is the objective the base of of our opponents but they didn't deploy any of the units there so they are expecting to just to go to the objective on the last turns with the jet bikes you see here after the shooting phase they use the flat out movement of the rider to be just on top of our road sides so this is a big threat the incubi can kill very easily the broad sides and all the drones they have the Wraith Knight tried to sh shoot to the Hammerhead, but they, he didn't manage to make any damage. So they did a pen hit, but we did the Jink safe. So on our turn, we tried to move the broadsides far from, from the Raider, but there the movement is not very high, so they only can move 6 inches. And then in our shooting phase, we killed the Raider. So we had the first blood on the second turn by killing the Raider. I try to move my terminators to protect the flank and, and try to block the movement of the incubi and then we shoot to the incubi and I think we manage to kill two of them. On the other flank we shoot to the Wraith Knight, I think we scrap another wound to them and I also kill the Talos with all the fire from my strike squad, Great Knight strike squad. So I have to say that from the divination, what I have is the power that is giving plus uh, four plus in vulnerable saves. So I was using each it each turn. So I only fail on the first turn that I I mm, draw a double six, and then I have a wound from that. But after that, every turn I have plus four plus in vulnerable save on my strike squad. Here another picture during the turn 2, you see the fire warriors protecting our objective in the ruins and the Kuts trying to shoot with the sni snipe rifles to the Dread uh, Knight, uh, sorry, the Wraith Knight. So at this point more or less our plan was, a, or our, or the battle was a going according to our plan, but the big threat is, so first in the second turn the a storm ribbon didn't came from the reserve, and you will see that in any of my battles, the 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 storm ribbon come on the came on the second turn, and there is a lot of heavy shooting from my opponents from our, our opponent side. So you, there is the two war workers with bright lancers, and then there is the ravager with the three dark lancers, and there were these are the reason why my terminators are receiving quite big damage. Then, as, a, as it was expected on the turn, the incubi just move ahead to assault the broad side. And in that side, they still use these ruins to protect the main block of the army from overshooting. Another picture of the incubi assaulting the broad sides. And here in the midfield, I will uh, now I will receive a heavy shooting from my from our opponents. The Wraith Knight try again to kill the Hammerhead but again the Jink saves the Hammerhead from dying. And here the Incubi assault the broadsides. I think they kill one broadside and, they, and I don't know if... I think that at the end they only kill one, one broadside but the broadsides didn't manage to do any wound to the Incubi. They lost the the battle, they ran away and they were catch by, by the high initiative of the incubi. So the broadsides were eliminated from the battle. And my terminators are wiped out by the shooting of the different dark and bright lances from the elder. But my strike squad and the crews remain in the middle of the battlefield and also you see in the ruins that we still have one of the steel suits alive. This is the positioning of the incubi after destroying the broadsides and they just 
keep moving, try to wipe out all our left flank. So in our third turn, I move my strike squad of Great Knights close to the Incubi to see if I, if they assault me and then I will, will fight with them. I don't care to be in, in, in on the open battlefield because I have the 4 plus in vulnerable say so the cover is not giving any special thing to me, I don't need the cover. And then the Kvuts just move to keep shooting to the Wraith Knight and see if we can scratch some more wounds from, from it. The Fire Warriors remain stationary in that ruins and they try to do to shoot as heavy as they can to the incubi, they will have plus one shooting because they have the fight cutter there that is giving plus one shot uh, to the squad. Also, you can see that the storm river, the storm riven, arrive from the reserve, and then I go, I go ahead to shoot to the white serpent because he used the sh the white serpent shield on the previous turn. So this is the opportunity to kill the white serpent with a pen hitting. So the Storm River did and the, his job, it killed the white serpent and then on the explosion I killed four, four of the Dark Avengers and the only surviving Dark Avenger ran out of the battlefield. In With our shooting we killed almost all the incubi and we make one wound to the to the archon so he lost the shadow field as we did big damage to the incubi unit my strike squad squad instead of shooting to the incubi i decided to shoot to the venom to see if i can destroy the venom and immobilize the two troops uh, squads from our opponent but he managed to do all the Jing saves. This is our situation at the end of turn 3. You see our Storm Raven uh, uh, threatening the, the position of the Elder Army and our Strike unit in the middle of the battlefield try to protect one of the objectives there and the Kutz just trying to keep shooting on the Wraith Knight. Of course our Fire Warriors they keep protecting one of the objectives. So in their turn, our opponent decide to go for my strike squad with the incubi. So I think here you can see that there's two incubi plus the archon. And then on the shooting, they prefer to see if they can destroy my storm raven because they have prescience and they have also guide, so they can repeat uh, when shooting. They have like twin link when they shooting. And the Wraith Knight decide to go against the Cruz, so he used the jump movement to go against the Cruz and then try to assault in the next in the assault phase. In the shooting, they managed to do a penetrating hit on my Storm Raven, and I get a result of immobilized. So next turn, I have to keep moving ahead at the same speed as in the previous turn. The Venom and the unit inside of the Venom, Venom shoot to my Strike Squad. I don't think they did any damage. And then the Incubi assault to my squad. I think I kill the Incubi, one of the Incubis in with the Overwatch fire. And then they assault to me. They kill one of my my Marines. But then in return, I, I wipe out the Incubi and the Archon. And in the consolidation move, I move close to the Kvuts. The Wraith Knight charge to the Kvuts. The Kvuts didn't manage to do any additional wounds, so the Wraith Knight only have two wounds. He charge on the Kvuts. The Kvuts cannot do any damage to him in close combat. I think the Kvuts lose by two or three. They run away and they were catch by the higher initiative of the Wraith Knight. So all the Kvuts are destroyed in the close combat. And here we were getting close to the end time, so because we have to speed up our gaming, I forgot to do some pictures, but I can I will explain what happened. So in our shooting phase, we concentrate all our shooting on the race night, and we did 
three additional wounds to the Wraith Knight. So the Wraith Knight had only one remaining wound. And then in the assault phase, I charge with my strike squad. I think the Wraith Knight killed one of my Marines. And the Marine with the Demon Hammer killed the Wraith Knight. The, killed the last one of the Wraith Knight. And then in my consolidation move, I move enough to be three inches of that objective. The stealth suit that was still surviving, he tried to shoot to the jet bikes that was behind of the ruins, but he failed completely. Then he tried to assault in close combat to tight them and uh, uh, why that they can move and capture the uh, the own target because we just decided this is the this is the last turn of the game, but the steel suit die in the close combat with the Farseer and the jet bike so they will be able to move their jet bikes so at that moment of the battle we have our objective control and we have one of the crusade objective also under control and our opponents only have two tubes so they only can choose to control two objectives so they will try to control one of the objectives in the ruins with the warriors in the venom and then try to control also their own base objective. Also from the shooting, I think they kill one of the Pathfinders. The Pathfinder ran away on the previous turn, but they regroup at the beginning of our turn. And this is the situation at the end of the turn. So the jet bikes move and do flat of movement to capture the objective that is on the hill at the bottom of the picture. So behind these ruins. And the, if, uh, at the left of the picture, the, you can see that the cavalry warriors capture another objective. They try to shoot everything on my strike squad, but this marine that is alive was not in line of sight of any of their weapons. So he was alive, he, they passed the leadership test, and he was able to capture also this objective. So at the end of the battle, we draw in in the main mission that was the basis, was the Emperor's Will, we all have our objective control. We also draw in the secondary objectives of West Crusade, we, we both have one objective under control, and then we won on the tertiary objective, because we did the first blood and we kill one Warlord, and on the on their side they, they didn't manage any point. So our warlords were alive and they didn't do line breaker. So we won this battle just on the tertiary objectives. One funny thing is in that championship in that tournament we have also to count the victory points and both armies did 946 victory points. So this is showing you how close was this game. So was I think was very um a killer game was very tight, very tough game and I, I enjoy a lot this game on my first run of this tournament. And that's all for our game one in the Green Knight tournament. So expect soon a new battle report with the second game. So thanks a lot for watching. And see you again later. Bye!